everyone, welcome and thanks so much for checking out my channel. My name is Tani and I'm an independent author. So on this channel I talk about books, writing, publishing, and some of the stories I've enjoyed as well as lessons that I've learned on my publishing journey. Today I just wanted to have a little chat with you guys about my book and share some of the next steps that I am working on. I am so excited because I have finished revisions on Tethered Spirits. Well, sort of finished. I finished this round of revisions at least, which is an important step because the book is getting closer and closer to being done. I haven't talked about Tethered Spirits much on here yet, but it is my newest book that I've been working on and I'm just really excited about it and really excited to share it with people. So I thought I would take a few minutes today and kind of talk about it and let you guys know what the book's about and why I'm so excited about it and what my process looks like and kind of what my next steps are in order to get the book ready for publication. But I will go ahead and read you the pitch for the book so that you can kind of get an idea of what it's about. An amnesiac immortal man and his friends must discover the reasons behind his curse and how to break it, all while being pursued by a dangerous magic wielder desperate to use him for her own ends. So like I said, it is a young adult fantasy novel. It's kind of more of a flintlock fantasy um, type of setting. So there are guns and cannons and things like that, but they're very early versions of those kinds of weapons. There's also a lot of magic in the world. There's a few different areas that our characters visit on their quest and different cultures might have more magic than others, or that might be more fully integrated into their society and their culture than in others, because there are more magic users in some areas. In the world where the story takes place, the magic users are called Tarja, and usually those Tarja are born with the ability to use magic, although sometimes they gain that ability by forming a bond with the spirit of a Tarja who has already died. The book has three main characters. The first one is Amar, and he is my very grumpy, very old, immortal man. Um, he has this sort of curse that is affecting him that he's trying to find answers about because what happens is that yes, he's immortal, but also he technically can die. It's just that he comes back to life every time. And when he does come back to life, he doesn't remember anything about his previous life. So he has no idea where he came from, who he originally was, nothing. He has a really good friend who has kind of been helping him on this journey, who has seen him die a couple of times and they're both just trying to figure out what's happening to him. They've also been joined on their quest by a girl named Saya and she is on kind of her own personal quest to find something of importance that she can take back to her tribe in the desert and that is kind of just a rite of passage, a coming of age kind of thing that they do and something that she has to complete if she wants to be accepted fully into her tribe. When the book starts they meet our second main character. Her name is Kasari and she is a Tarja. She has become a Tarja through forming a bond with the spirit of a dead Tarja. And when you do that, you end up sharing your life with the spirit. So in sharing that life, she has essentially traded half of her remaining lifespan for the ability to use magic except she refuses to use her magic. And we don't really know why when the story starts, we just know that she just won't use her magic. The third main character is a girl named Aleda, and she is pursuing Amar because she believes his immortality could be the answer to saving her brother's life. Her brother is dying from this illness, and she really thinks that if she can catch Amar and use his immortality, she can save her brother which is extra important to her because she and her brother were orphaned in this invasion of their homeland that happened several years before the story starts. So he really is the only person she has left in the world and she's very determined to save him and willing to do anything it takes. She's more of the antagonist of the story. So it's really interesting to have that side of the story included as well and see kind of why she's hunting Amar and his friends and why she's doing these things. Right now, the story is about 150,000 words long, which is much longer than I had anticipated it being when I first started writing it. It's kind of a, it's a monster, honestly. It's, it's the longest book I've ever written and it's been such a 
like it's been really fun but it's also been just a pain in the butt to revise and to go through because it's it's just big i feel like i've cut out everything that i can cut out and what's left is it's just where the story's at that's okay fantasy novels can be long right so it's fine some of the inspirations behind the story were howl's moving castle that was a really big inspiration to me as i was writing it six of crows and avatar the last airbender were also kind of an inspiration for the story and also the mass effect games which i know doesn't make a ton of sense but that was kind of an inspiration as well so this is a book that i actually started writing when i was a teenager and so some of these characters have been floating around in my head since i was you know 16 17 years old and they've been around for a really long time and i ended up putting the story aside to work on other things and didn't really mess with it very much. And then in 2016, I think for Camp NaNoWriMo, I decided to draft it and that ended up going okay. I got probably two thirds of the way through the story that I had planned in my head and then ended up having a really big epiphany about Secrets of Peace and decided to go back to that project. And so Tethered Spirits, the version that it was at the time, just kind of fell by the wayside and I didn't really do much with it at the time. As I was writing it though, I did feel like there were just pieces that I couldn't quite fit together and didn't really know how to tie everything together in a way that worked. Looking back now, I think that honestly, I probably just didn't have the skills to execute the story the way that I wanted to. And now I feel like I do have those skills a little more and can really bring everything together the way that I want to. So it's probably a good thing that I waited and that it has taken me so long to write it. That has really allowed me to grow as a writer and to learn new things so that I can tell this story the best way that I possibly can. Because it's been around so long and because I've had so much time to sit with these characters and to ruminate on the way that I want the story to go, this really feels like just it's the book of my heart. It's been in my heart for so long. There are so many things in this book that are things that I very, very much believe and very much want to share with other people themes and ideas that I just really have always wanted to explore in a story and that I feel like I really can explore in a story now. There are a lot of elements of mental health and how does trauma impact people and how do people heal from trauma in this book that are really important to me that I wanted to explore. And I, I really just am so in love with this story and so in love with these characters, more so than anything else I've written. And so I'm really, really excited that it's getting closer to being done and closer to me being able to share it with everyone else. It's, it means a lot to me and I'm just excited for other people to read it. So now that I've finished this draft, it's kind of time for me to start thinking about what's next and how I'm going to get the book ready for publication going forward. The first thing I need to do is there are a few sections that I need to go back through and look at again and make sure that they have all come together. There were some major changes that I made in this round of revisions. I, I guess not too major, but major enough that I feel like I need to just look over them again um, before I send the book out. I also need to come up with questions for beta readers. I try to break down the book into sections and maybe have five five, six, seven chapters in a section, and then I will ask readers questions about that section as they're reading in order to get an idea of their reactions to certain things that have happened or just to kind of gauge what's working and what's not. So I need to come up with those questions. I am still looking for beta readers. I am going to have my critique partner read this round, and then I probably need at least four or five other beta readers, hopefully. And then while the book is with beta readers, I have some other things that I want to work on. That's usually kind of how my process goes. I will have a book and I'll send it off to beta readers and then I will immediately work on something else because that's just how I work. I have to be constantly doing something creative. Writing and art and things like that are a really important part of my self-care and so that's what I do. I send my book out and then I just start working on something else. So while Tethered Spirits is with beta readers, I'm actually going to be working on the cover for it so that hopefully by the time it comes back, I will have a better idea of a release date and can plan a cover reveal and pre-orders and things like that. But obviously the cover has to be ready before any of those things can happen. So I'm really trying to get the cover art done while 
the book is out with beta readers. I do all of my own cover art. I have for all of the books that I've published already. It just works for me. I like having control over my covers and being able to make them the way that I want them. I feel like they turn out pretty good and that's like an extra expense that I don't have to pay for. Covers can get pretty expensive. Those parts of self-publishing that you have to pay for like that all can add up really quickly and if I don't have to pay someone to make my covers for me and can just do it myself then great. I also really enjoy making my own covers so you know why not. I also will be going over the outline for book two. It's really less of an outline at this point and more of just like a zero draft. Um, I think that the the outline it's like 30-40,000 words long so kind of a draft in and of itself. Anyway so I'll be going through that and kind of figuring out what works and what doesn't and if I need to change anything and depending on how that goes I may even start diving into drafting book two. I would really like to be able to make some good progress on that before book one releases just so that I don't have you know a whole ton of time in between releases but we'll just kind of have to see how that goes. I also have a couple of short stories that are already written. I have one for Matul who is Amar's friend and was a favorite among my last round of beta readers. He is the most wholesome character I think I've ever written and everybody loves him because how could you not? He's the best. Anyways, so I have a short story for him that I have already written and really just need to go back in and rework. And then I have a short story for Kisari and Lucian. That story I actually wrote I think like in, I don't know, it was a long time ago. It may have even been before I started drafting in 2016. Anyways, I have a short story for her that's already been written, but really it probably just needs to be rewritten at this point. A lot of things have changed. I think even her name has changed since I wrote that originally. But that's something that I want to send out to newsletter subscribers eventually. So, you know, if you're interested in reading those, feel free to sign up for my newsletter and those should be coming hopefully soon, like summer-ish sometime. I also have a lot of other art projects that I want to get to um, specifically for a book that I will be announcing soon. It's a smaller book, it's just something kind of quick and simple but it's something I'm excited about. I haven't officially announced it on social media or publicly yet but I will be making that announcement soon. That one will release probably at the end of summer and definitely before Tethered Spirits releases. But I have a lot of artwork to get done for that so I am hoping to be working on some of that while Tethered Spirits is out with beta readers. And then there's just a bunch of other little things, all the all the little things that go into planning and preparing for a book release. I have kind of a release date in mind but I'm not quite ready to announce that officially yet. Probably when the book comes back from this round of beta readers I will be announcing that. I, I do want to kind of see where their feedback is and if the story is coming together the way I think it is before I make that announcement just to make sure there's no major issues that I'm not seeing. So anyways I have lots of really exciting stuff planned. I'm super thrilled just to be getting this book closer and closer to being ready for release. If you guys think it sounds interesting at all I would love to know what you think so be sure to leave a comment down below. And if you're working on a book of your own I would love to hear about it. I always love hearing about what other writers are working on and the awesome stories that they're creating so feel free to leave a comment and tell me about that as well. If you enjoyed this video please hit the like button and let me know that really helps my channel. If you want to see more videos like this in the future you can hit the subscribe button and ring the bell and you will get notified about all my later videos. Thanks so much for being here and I hope you have a great rest of your day.